So the outline of my topic today will be this. What is multiple myeloma? I explained briefly uh, what is multiple myeloma, how do you diagnose multiple myeloma, and what are the problems in multiple myeloma of, in the bones, and how do the bone problems occur, and how do you manage the bone problems, and make a conclusion based on this. So what is multiple myeloma? Multiple myeloma actually is a malignant proliferation of normal plasma cell. Actually, plasma cell is a normal cell in our body. Plasma cell is a cell that produces antibodies, right? Plasma cell uh, actually is a white cell. Cell that put it, we call it a B cell. And when actually we have infection or anything, the plasma cell will produce antibodies to protect us from the organism or bacteria or whatever. Okay. So, but multiple, I'm oh, sorry, multiple myeloma. The plasma cell, they are abnormal, all right? So they are cancerous cells, okay? It's different from the normal plasma cell. So they produce a lot of antibodies, so they are Mahasikan Banya antibodies. We call it monoclonal protein, all right? So in a normal situation, when you have infection, we have many types of plasma cell. Plasma cell A, B, C, D, yeah, just like the people here. So we have different types of plasma cell. So we produce different types of antibodies in the in our body, right? So these different types of antibody will work together to kill the bacteria, okay? But in multiple myeloma, because this is a cancerous cell, so they only produce one type of antibody, right? And this antibody, they produce a lot. And at the same time, the normal antibodies are not produced because the abnormal plasma cell actually they suppress the normal plasma cell, okay? So all these Antibodies, we call it monoclonal because it's only one type of antibodies, okay? From one clones of abnormal plasma cell. So they are not functioning, they are double function. So antibody they are banyak, tapi they are double function, okay? So this is uh, multiple myeloma. And there are many steps of this pathogenesis in multiple myeloma. We call it plasma cell disorders. So multiple myeloma actually is at the end of the spectrum. Okay, so plasma cell disorder can start from, we call it MGAS. MGAS is some patient, especially older people, they go and do medical checkup, do a blood test, and then they do some blood tests, and then they will notice they have these monoclonal antibodies. Okay, but the monoclonal antibodies amount is not a lot, and they don't have any problems. So this is the beginning, we believe the beginning of the uh, plasma cell disorder. So. MGAS will progress over the years, okay, and become multiple myeloma. When we define multiple myeloma, when this abnormal plasma cell actually causing organ damage to our body, all right. So later on, I'll show you what are the organ damage can happen in multiple myeloma. And the clinical features and prognosis actually are heterogeneous. So different people they may come to us with different problems, all right. So this is a little bit about the epidemiology of multiple myeloma. This is from overseas, not from ours. So, so uh, roughly they estimated about four per hundred thousand cases per per year, and men are more common, slightly more common than women to have multiple myeloma, and it consists of about one percent of all malignancy. So satu peratus daripada semua cancer and ten percent of all hematological malignancy. Okay, hematological malignancy like Cancer, cell therapy, leukemia, lymphoma, multiple myeloma, and other types. So it's about 10% of all this cancer in hematology, uh, blood cancer. So the median age is about 66 years old. So basically, this is a disease of older age group people. Okay? But in Malaysia, we see uh, many patients actually they are quite young. Uh, our youngest patient, I think, is about 40, early 40s. Uh. The youngest I remember is 26 years old. Okay, All right. And this is in from Western countries. So in Malaysia, I think we are younger each uh, patient. Uh, many people believe actually cancer now is more common, right? If compared to the past, but actually the incidence actually is not increasing. But it's because we diagnose more patients, right? Now patients go for many medical checkup because they are going to work or whatever or routine medical checkup. And because our diagnostic tests are more sensitive, so we pick up more patients. So 
Therefore, actually, we have more patients with cancer. It's not because the incidence is increasing, but it's because of the diagnosis. We diagnose more patients with cancer. And the other reason is because people live old, uh, longer. All right? So we have patients 80 years old, 78 years old, 90 years old. Because now, our society, our people are aging population. We are having aging population, especially in Klang, Klang Valley. Okay? When you are getting older, the more chances you get cancer. Right? This effect on life. Okay? So, why do patients get multiple myeloma or other type of cancer? A lot of patients, after diagnosis, they ask the doctor, why am I getting cancer? The reason is, a lot of time we don't know why. Okay? But we believe there are many factors which can predispose to uh, somebody to cancer. Genetic factors, alright? So, we believe those who have cancer, they are born with genes actually eat, which is not stable, right? So the genes are not stable and over the years they're exposed to environmental factors such as radiation, chemicals or certain type of infection, right? Will cause the unstable genes actually change and become a, uh, we call it mutation and uh, the cell become a cancerous cell, right? But to identify what is the cause of cancer in each patient is impossible, alright? Any questions so far? Impossible. Impossible. <laughs> Impossible. All right? Okay? Unless there's certain type of cancer which actually you inherited from your parents, like certain type of breast cancer, cancer of the colon, you inherited that type of genes, then you will get a cancer. But not in other type of cancer like multiple myeloma or leukemia or lymphoma. All right? So what will happen, just how we said, plasma cell disorder is a spectrum of disease. It can be asymptomatic until it causes problems. So when they have problems, they may have this, we call it hypercalcemia. So the calcium in the body becomes very high. It's because actually there's destruction to the bone from the multiple myeloma. So they have high calcium and then they have renal failure. It can damage the kidney. There are many causes of kidney failure in multiple myeloma. It can be either because the abnormal plasma cell infiltrated to the kidney or because the abnormal protein actually uh, deposited in the kidney. Yeah? So many reasons. And the other thing is because they accumulated in the bone marrow, actually they suppress the normal bone marrow cells. So they can't produce enough red cells, therefore they get anemia. Alright? Some patients come to us because of anemia. Anemia is lacking of red blood cells. Alright? Okay, and just how we, I think today's our topic is about bone, so they can cause problem to the bone. But some patients will come with severe bone pain, especially lower back pain or any type of bone pain because of fracture or other problems with the bones. All right? Okay? So this is, we call it a craps, all right? This is for medical students, remember what could, have, could be the problems of multiple myeloma. So hypercalcemia patient will come in just like a uh, patient with diabetes mellitus. Right? Because hypercalcemia, too high calcium in your body will cause you to pass out a lot of urine. Then you feel thirsty all the time. Right? And you become dehydrated. Right? Hypercalcemia. Of course, it can cause bone pain, can cause abdominal pain, sometimes can cause mental changes, behavioral changes. Right? They become confused also. Right? And some patients actually they have recurrent infection. As I just now explained to you, Plasma cell, a normal plasma cell will produce antibody for us to fight with infection. But because this plasma cell are abnormal, the antibodies are not functioning. So the immune system actually is impacted in multiple myeloma patients. Okay? So they are prone to get infection. They may come to us every month, they got pneumonia, pneumonia, and pneumonia, or other type of infection. So they can present as recurrent infection. Okay? And as I said, sometimes they have no symptom at all just because they need a medical checkup. They, they, they went to see a doctor and they did some blood tests and the blood test shows some abnormal uh, result like anemia. Right? Mild anemia, they may not have symptoms or because the proteins are very high. Right? Okay, how do you diagnose multiple myeloma? First thing, you need to have abnormal plasma cell in the marrow. So to diagnose multiple myeloma most of the time, or all the time, 100%, we need a bone marrow examination, right? So to
to look at the abnormal plasma cell in the marrow. Okay, another thing we check for this M protein. Just now I said monoclonal uh, globulin, right? So M protein from the blood or from the urine. So the proteins is too much, so it can be excreted into the urine, and we can detect this protein in the urine. So I. If you are the patient, you know, you, we always ask you to collect your urine 24 hours, right? In the bottle, okay? And just how I said, multiple myeloma, they must have organ damage. So bone is one of the organs that can have problems with the bone. Alright, I'll show you the uh, pictures of the abnormal bones. They can either have lytic lesion, osteoporosis, or sometimes fractures, okay? Some patients actually, the abnormal plasma cell, they will accumulate and become just like a tumour, a solid organ tumour. We call it plasma cytoma, right? Plasma cytoma can happen in soft tissue in a bone, right? Some people will come in with a lump, right? So we call it plasma cytoma. So we need to take a tissue from the tumour to send to a lab to confirm this is a plasma cell, right? So we, we need to have either this, plus this, this or this to say this is multiple myeloma. Of course, you must have renal failure, anemia, and other things, okay? So just now I said, this is a healthy bone marrow. So this is normal plasma cell in the marrow, and we have normal red cell, normal white cell in the bone marrow. But if you have multiple myeloma, this unhealthy bone marrow, and we have too much of plasma cell, all right? So you compare with the normal one, the red cell actually has reduced because the plasma cell, they are stronger. So the characteristic of cancer cell, no matter which type of cancer is, it's not they are stronger. Actually, they live longer because they don't die. Okay? Therefore, they can accumulate. And I think they grow faster. So they proliferate that faster than other normal cells. That's why they become more. And they will produce certain things to suppress the normal tissue. Okay? So therefore, they survive in the bone marrow and suppress the normal cell. Okay? And they produce a lot and proteins here, okay? So what are the problems or what we can, we can we see on the x-ray if we take an x-ray of patient with multiple myeloma? So usually we'll take an x-ray of the scar, ribs, spine, all the long bones, pelvics, and long bone shoulders to look for this type of lesion, lytic lesion, osteopenia, osteoporosis, or fractures, okay? And of course, some center or some countries, they will use MRI or this thing to detect like plasma cytoma, the solid uh, tumor of the plasma cell. But generally, we just do X-ray, right, in our setting. Pardon? PET scan. PET scan is not a routine. It's not a routine. Uh? There are still a lot of studies on PET scan. Uh? Whether PET scan will change the management or not, we are still not sure. Whether we improve the management or improve... You tell more, but the management is still be the same. So whether we alter the management until now, we're still not so sure yet. So it's not a routine to do a PET scan for multiple myeloma. Even MRI, some center will do MRI to look for the bony lesion. Okay, but it's not a routine. Okay. So just now I said lytic lesion. You look at the scar, all right, the X-ray. You can see a big hole here, and then there are multi hole there. So we call it a lytic lesion. Okay. I explained to you why in multiple myeloma you get this type of lesion. And this is osteoporosis, right? So I think everybody knows what is osteoporosis. As it happens usually in older age group, especially in women rather right, than men, right? Because of hormonal uh, di differences, okay? In normal bone on x-ray, you can see it's white, right? But on Osteoporotic bones and x-ray actually can see are black black things, right? We call it osteoporosis. And the, this is the tissue, the normal bone you see is compact, right? But in osteoporotic bones, you can see a lot of these spaces, okay? So this is the differences between normal bone and osteoporotic bone. So sometimes on the x-ray of spine, you can see there's fracture there, okay? On other bones, you can see fracture, yeah, this lytic lesion almost fracture already, right? And this is after the operation. I think doctor uh, the surgeon will tell us about management of bony problems in multiple myeloma after this. 
Okay, so why actually in multiple myeloma you will get uh, bony problems? All right. So this is a normal pictures of normal bone physiology. In our bones, actually, we have two important cells. One we call it osteoclast. The other one is osteoblast. Osteoblast the function actually to form the bone. Okay, but it can't form the bone forever. Otherwise, you have the bones become too thick. So you must have something to counteract with the osteoblast. So this osteoclast. Osteoclast will remove the bone. Okay, so this normal physiology. Your hormone, then you promote the osteoblast activity so that you won't get osteoporosis. But you use a lot of steroid, the steroid will inhibit the this osteoblast. Then you get osteoporosis when you take too much of steroid, right? You get osteoporosis because of the effect on the osteoblast. Okay, and then the hormone and calcitonin, other things will inhibit the osteoclast. So osteoclast inhibit, then you to prevent osteoporosis, okay, and other things here, okay. So this is a normal physiology. So this, the bone formation is balanced between all these things, okay. But what happens if you have cancer or in multiple myeloma? Actually, multiple myeloma is type of cancer. You produce some substances in the body. We call it cytokine thing. All these cytokine things will promote the activities of osteoclasts. So that there's increase in the activities of osteoclasts. Therefore, actually, you rem remove more bones rather than forming a bones. That's why you get a osteopenia, osteoporosis, litigation, and then later on you get fracture. Alright? So, myeloma effects on bone. So, it promoting, a stimulating osteoclasts and suppressing the osteoblast activity. So the balance actually is gone. So there's no balance and you get more resorption than formation of bone. Okay? Alright, so we know the pathophysiology, therefore we know how to treat multiple myeloma, uh, bony problems in multiple myeloma. There's a drug we call it biphosphonate. I think if multiple myeloma, uh, we have many types of biphosphonate. You have parmidronate, you have Zolidronate and many many types. Okay? Zometa, yeah, Zolidronate. Alright, so this drug actually will inhibit at 2 here. So it prevents the formation of the mature osteoclast so that you don't have too much of osteoclast activity and at the same time, bifosmate also can inhibit the mature osteoclast activity so that hopefully they won't remove the bone from your body. Right? So this is the same thing, bifosphonate can inhibit this, alright? So what's the treatment? So we know the problems, how do you treat? So we are treating multiple myeloma if the patient has symptoms, alright? Or there's organs, organs failure, okay? So some patients without symptoms like MGAS, the earlier stage of the plasma cell is disorder, we just wait and see. We just monitor them because there's no problems, you don't need to treat them. I'll tell you why, alright, later on. Okay, so when the patient has symptoms of this organ problems, then we'll treat the multiple myeloma. So the first thing we'll treat is to support the patient first. If they have anemia, we need blood transfusion for the patient if they're symptomatic. When there's hypercalcemia, we'll manage the hypercalcemia. So basically to replace the fluid, right? Because hypercalcemia patient, you pass out too much of water, so it becomes very dry. Alright, so we need a lot of fluid and of course we use bifosphonate to inhibit the activity of osteoclast to reduce the calcium. Right? Calcium basically is from the bone. Okay? And if there is renal failure, then depends on what's the cause of renal failure. Sometimes we need to biopsy the kidneys. Put a needle into the kidney and take a tissue and see what's the problem with the kidney and what's the cause of the renal failure. Okay? And another thing, of course, you need to treat the underlying cause, which is the myeloma. Right? So there are many drugs. I'm sure you heard about the drugs. Valkate, linalidomide, thalidomide, and old drugs, melphalans, uh, cyclophosphamide, and steroid. Steroid is something very, still very important in treating multiple myeloma and certain type of cancers such as lymphoma. So these are chemo drugs, chemotherapy drugs, and the new drugs, they are not chemotherapy drugs. All right? So now there are more drugs actually is different from the old drugs. They can treat cancer, but they actually not the chemotherapy drugs, right? They are not a cytotoxic drug. Cytotoxic drug it means the this uh, drug actually will kill 
the cancerous cell, and of course, they affect the normal cell as well. But normal drugs, I mean, new drugs, they are not cytotoxic drugs. They have other mechanisms to kill the cancerous cell. Right? And another treatment, yep? Say again, the old drugs, the difference between the old and the new drugs? Old drugs, they are the cytotoxic drugs, chemotherapy drugs for other types of cancer. They kill all kinds of all cells, like uh, mostly the cancerous cell. Uh, and a little bit of normal cell. Because cytotoxic drug, the characteristic is they're killing those fast growing cells. Fast growing cells like cancerous cells. Of course, our hair also growing fast, so it'll be affected. Our bone marrow normal cell also be affected by cytotoxic. Because the characteristic of cytotoxic drug, they are designed to kill those fast growing cells, especially the cancerous cell. Okay? Only kills the cancer. Ah, the new drugs, because we know, ah, I think it's very molecular, so there are a lot of things actually we found in cancer cells, so there are a lot of pathways, okay? So all these drugs actually to inhibit certain pathways in the biology of the cell. Yeah, it's difficult to explain, okay? Another treatment for multiple myeloma, which is still valid now, is the hemopoietic stem cell transplant. We call it Bermindahan Som Som Tulang. Uh, but now we don't transplant the bone marrow but actually it's the stem cell so we change the name from bone marrow transplant to stem cell transplantation all right but there's a age limit you usually do it for a young patient so young patient the definition is different in different countries here i think it's about 65 years old and below we consider young in america maybe 75 years old 80 years old they still do transplant okay and of course uh, the one is to treat the myeloma and then how to treat the bony problems. So there are a few things we need to see, look into it. Pain relief. So we, when you have pain, so of course you need a lot of pain, uh, painkillers to relieve the pain. And there are surgical intervention also can relieve the pain to support the bone. I think it's the next uh, topic we are going to discuss. And treating the myeloma itself actually will improve the bone problem. Right? Okay? And the other drug, just now I mentioned to you, biphosphonate is important in treating the bony problems in multiple myeloma. Just now I said certain plasma cell disorder, when they are not causing problems, we don't treat them because at this moment we still cannot cure multiple myeloma. Alright? We are only controlling multiple myeloma. Okay? Because we treat them, hopefully we can control them for a certain period of time. Unfortunately, most of the patient, the disease will come back later. All right? Therefore, if the disease is not causing problem, there's no point to treat it because you treat it, you'll come back also. And you're treating any diseases, you may get side effects from the treatment. So there's no point. The maintenance is not necessary. Maintenance, whether it's necessary or not, it depends. Maintenance, the purpose of maintenance is to just prolong the controlling periods. It's not to cure the disease as well. Yeah. Some people believe in maintenance, some people know. Because some people believe to wait until disease relapses only you treat again. Yeah. So the school of thoughts, there are two school of thoughts. Right? Okay. So of course we are aiming to cure the disease in the future, but not at the moment. There are many, many new drugs and new findings in cancer. Alright? And the good news is the median the survival actually has improved a lot. Okay, in the past, the median survivor. Median survivor it means if you have hundred patients, fifty of them will live more than thirty months in the past. All right, and fifty of them will die before thirty months. Okay, all right, and now the median survivor is sixty-two months. It means half of the patient can live beyond sixty-two months. Of course, some will live maybe hundred months, two hundred months. There are still a small, very small proportion, I think they are cured from the disease. One or two percent. They can live until they die naturally or other, due to other causes. All right? But we don't say we cure multiple myeloma at the moment. All right? mm. So this is the survivor. In the past five years, it's about only 31% of patients can live more than... Uh, oh no, this is... Uh, yeah, this is... The recent one, sorry, right? 31, uh, 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 more than 30%, okay? And then 10 years, still some people can live more than 10 years, and small proportion of patients can live more than 20 years, right? 
So I think this patient, you can say they are cured from the disease. Okay? Yep, this is the same slide. Thank you.